Let's talk about lenses for event photography. The different lenses that you have available to you, what I would recommend, the lenses I own, etc. The 24 to 70 is likely going to be your first purchase as a professional event photographer, and that's because of its versatility. At 24 millimeters, you can get all of your establishing shots, and through that focal range, you can pretty much get everything else you need, from group photos, to candid interactions, to zooming in and getting close-up candids. You can get it all. There are, of course, other options that will cover a similar focal length, and you also have variability in your maximum aperture, so we can talk about that a bit. A 24 to 70 f4 will still get the job done. However, if you want a one and done lens that you can do most events with, I would recommend getting the f2.8. There are 24 to 105s and 24 to 120s. Uh, those are all f4 lenses, and that would be an option as well and would have more versatility at the cost of less versatility as far as low light work goes. Truthfully, there are event photographers that could just own this lens and shoot everything that they shoot. I personally can't because I require specific lenses for certain types of events I do. But if you're doing kids' birthday parties that are never in really tight rooms, for example, you could totally just own this lens and run a business. So when does a 17 to 40 come into play? The 17 to 40 is going to be useful for a variety of reasons. The first one will be those ultra wide shots that you basically just can't do without being able to zoom past 24 millimeters with the 24 to 70. Um, that's gonna be situations where you're in a tight room, for example, or that you don't wanna to have to run really far away to get a wider shot, that kind of thing. But there are advantages to this lens over the 24 to 70 that would make me choose it over the 24 to 70, even at equivalent focal lengths. And that would be its lightweight. This is an extremely light lens compared to the 24 to 70, mostly because it only goes down to f4. But if you're shooting wider shots, typically you want more depth. You don't want less for a group photo, for example. Establishing shots, you usually, unless you just need to allow more light in, you usually want a larger f-stop in order to get more depth to show more of what's happening in a scene. The other good advantage of this lens would be after a long day, that light weight really adds up. Um, so even me, someone who likes heavy gear, uh, if I shoot a 13 hour job at the end of the night, I'm totally happy to use a 17 to 40 over a 24 to 70 if possible. If you're a wedding photographer, this is a really cool lens because you can really mix it up in the dance floor and shoot some wide shots that you wouldn't be able to get using the 24 to 70. And if you are using the method I've described in the past in some of my videos, I'm gonna pretend this is a flash and your hand holding a flash, it becomes a lot easier to shoot one-handed with a 17 to 40 and holding a flash in your hand than a 24 to 70. Now, again, there are going to be alternatives to this lens that, oops. Of course, there are going to be alternatives to this exact lens, and this video isn't just for Canon people. Uh, Canon, though, does make the EF 16 to 35 f 2.8, but again, I don't really find that 2.8 necessary for the type of work I'm doing when I'm choosing this lens. And of course, there are RF versions of this lens, which include a 14 to 35 f4 and a 15 to 35 f 2.8. However, both are going to be a lot more expensive. This particular lens, I think, goes for about 700 now. Um, not bad for a pro lens. But here's the thing about this lens. 90% of the time, I'm shooting at 17 millimeters, mostly for my establishing shots. So it becomes kind of excessive to have to carry around a heavy pro lens, even if relative to my other lenses, it's actually pretty light. And that's where this RF 16 millimeter lens has come in. I recently picked it up because I just got tired of carrying this lens around for just a few shots. There's a specific type of job I'll shoot, small parties, that kind of thing, in one room at a restaurant, in which I just don't need more than one lens to shoot the whole job, but I do need to get a few establishing shots, maybe like five, literally. And so throwing this in my bag frees up a lot of space. I don't have to carry too much. Um, and because it's only at 16 millimeters, it has everything I personally need. And a lot of these wide shots I am shooting handheld. I'm not using flash because I can't really get the flash to cascade across the entire scene and look natural enough. And so I'm hand holding it at slow shutter speeds and 
it's a lot easier to hold a very light lens on a camera than a big heavy one. It's been great. I do recommend this lens. The 70 to 200 is a super versatile lens, but that said, there are a lot of event photographers that may never need one. If you're only, again, shooting things like birthday parties, you won't need a telephoto because you will always have the option to physically get closer to your subject matter. But if you're photographing conferences, speakers on stage, that kind of thing, you physically won't be able to get close enough with anything but like a 70 to 200, so it becomes necessary. But if you do own the lens, there are a lot of things you can use it for, even when you're not shooting speakers on stage, of course. It's great for those close-up candids that if you see it happening from across the room and you don't have to move at all, it can be really beneficial. There are moments that you could potentially miss if you have to physically walk closer, and this lens has been incredible for that. Um, it's also, especially this RF version, it is incredibly fast focusing and the optics are superb. It is a lens that I would recommend you get a 2.8 version of and not an f4 version of. Um, if you can't afford one yet, don't worry. My first 70 to 200 was an f4. Eventually I bought a 2.8. But often the stuff we're photographing with this lens will want a very wide aperture. Um, I do a lot of candid moments in low lighting to speakers on stage to low lighting in a sports venue. Rarely for me, but that is something I would need it for. Let's talk about if you will ever need anything with a greater reach than 200 millimeters. I personally have never needed one in my entire career. I'm not saying you won't if you're photographing like NASCAR type stuff, sure. But for your standard type of events, corporate, private, doesn't really matter, it's going to be very rare. And if there is an event here or there that you do need something with more reach, you always could use a teleconverter to extend the reach of your lens. But keep in mind, not all lenses are going to be compatible. Believe it or not, I think this new RF 70 to 200 is not compatible with a teleconverter. I knew that when I bought it, but again, I've never needed more than 200 millimeters. I personally have always found that I can move close enough to get the shot I want with, with 200 millimeters. And maybe if I have to, I would crop a little bit, but that's rare. Another thing is, um, I have a little story. So I last year, and I'll be photographing it again this year, I shot a really large conference where the house photographers numbered, I think, 10. And on top of that, you had a lot of press and whatnot. All of the house photographers were seasoned event photographers, and no one had, well, I think one guy had a greater reach than a 200. But... The independent photographers would show up and some of them would just stand in the back of a hall with a 600 millimeter lens and they wouldn't move no matter what and they would just stand there to get their shot. But you have to remember, these guys are there for one shot. As a house photographer, you're, getting, you're creating a story and you're getting a lot of different shot types. And we're active and moving around. We don't need that one shot. So this is going to be a more versatile lens and just standing in the back shooting at 600 millimeters. I want to talk about shooting with prime lenses as an event photographer. When it comes to prime lenses, you're basically sacrificing some versatility for, well, actually some versatility. Um, you're sacrificing that ability to zoom in and out for that ability to often shoot in lower light because most prime lenses are going to have larger apertures, their max aperture than a zoom lens. For example, this non-professional 85 millimeter lens opens up to 1.8. Does it perform amazingly well at 1.8? Well, no, it's not professional. But does it perform really well at 1.8? Yeah, I would say it does. Um, the thing about prime lenses is, is that for someone who's done this long enough, you're going to begin to understand that you pre-visualize your shots. I do at least. So I know the shot I want to get before I'm even raising the camera to my eye. And I've memorized my focal lengths, not by effort, but by doing this over and over and over again. When I'm shooting with an 85, I just know the field of view of an 85, which means I know exactly how many feet I need to step to get a shot I want to get. I find this is not necessarily an advantage. Some people might consider it an advantage that some people think you get more creative when you physically move your body. 
For me, I think more importantly, you stay really engaged in your craft, which means you enjoy what you're doing a lot more, me personally at least. One issue I have had with prime lenses is that if you're, I'm shooting with a prime like an 85, which is a telephoto, and I'm shooting at an event in which people might ask me for group photos, I can get into a situation in which I'm like, I physically cannot get the, your group photo and I'll have to run and make a lens change, which might not be a big deal if it's a small party and there aren't like events happening, you're just roaming, but oftentimes it can be a big deal. I personally would recommend prime lenses if you're doing a two camera body setup um, where you have something, neither of these are wide, but if you have a wide angle and then a telephoto on the other body, you really have your bases covered. And for a lot of events, you'll never need more reach and you'll always be able to physically get to where you need to get to make the prime lens work. The first prime lens that I ever owned as a professional was my 85 millimeter f1.8. I originally bought it because I shot a lot of weddings and I shot a lot of portraits at the time, but as I moved away from all of that type of work and really devoted myself to event photography, I found that it actually makes for a really cool candid lens as well. Maybe not those interaction shots, but getting in close and getting a big emotional moment, it's been great. And at f1.8, you can let in a lot of light. This particular 85 is not a pro lens. It is not exceptionally quick to focus. The contrast, especially in the color, is a bit flat compared to like my, F, my um, 135 millimeter lens or my 50 millimeter lens, but nonetheless, it's been great. But all that said, there is a specific time I absolutely need the lens and I would say I could, do it with, I could do without it, but I wouldn't want to. And that would be when I'm shooting impromptu headshots at corporate events, that kind of thing. There's always going to be a time, there are, often is a time where they're like, hey, can you just update our headshots real quick? And if we're not talking about a setup, I just include that in my event photography coverage. Other times I'm doing like a headshot station where I will bring in a portable studio at a conference, that kind of thing, and people can go and update their headshot throughout. This is a good transition to my 135 because my 135 would be the other lens that I use for headshots. I find the 135 millimeter to be a much more versatile lens as far as getting those close-up candids I love to get. And even though it doesn't open up quite as wide, I actually find that the 85 that I own at 1.8 is a bit, there's more to be desired as far as the results I get out of it uh, wide open. Whereas this wide open is beautiful. It has a lot of character. I think it's debatable if that's a good thing for event photography coverage, to be honest, but I do love the look of it. It also will allow me to shoot wide open without a flash, longer than I would with a lot of my f2.8 lenses, to a degree. Because here's the thing, even though I can shoot at f2 with this lens, with my 70 to 200, I can only go up to 2.8, but it has image stabilization that will work well with my camera body, which means I can shoot at slower shutter speeds. But then again, there's an advantage to shooting with this lens because I might not want such a slow shutter speed because I might get some motion blur from the subject matter, not handshake, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a toss up, uh, but if you maybe don't want to carry a big 70 to 200, this might be a good option. This was definitely uh, my favorite purchase that I did not need. The next prime lens I do want to talk about would be my RF50 1.2. This has really become my favorite lens that I'm currently using. And that's because I find it to be incredibly versatile in many different ways. Some people find 50 millimeters to be like boring because it's just run of the mill, it's right in the middle. Uh, but I love that about it. I have found that it really forces me to engage with my work because I'm, if I'm only using that one lens, I'm moving in and out a lot, which I have a lot of fun doing. I usually find, except for like establishing type shots, that I can back up enough to get most shots I need, and I'm able to move in close enough to get the really tight emotional candids I like to get. Um, I think that getting in close with the 50 isn't too close, but even if it were, I found that I'm able to move in, grab the shot I need, and move out, and it doesn't become awkward for the people I'm photographing. There's a lot more 
to this lens though that makes it an incredible piece of equipment and that would be with the R6 or pr presumably with the R5 it just works so well it can shoot in what feels like like pitch darkness and still lock on so not only can it shoot in very low light because of that f1.2 aperture but it also seems to see in the dark as far as focusing goes i've shot images that were just like no light available at all and i just dropped my shutter down to maybe a fifth asked my subject to be as still as possible um, went to 1.2 and only a th iso of 3200 and still got the shot i needed Additionally, for better or worse, but I think for better in the long run, as far as how good it is as a tool, it is incredibly light. You know, Canon did switch to making their pro lenses with their plastic carbonate, whatever they call it. It's not full metal. It is lighter. It doesn't feel as premium in a way because of that. But really, these are tools, and if plastic is the best professional tool, I, I, I guess I'm for it although I do hate plastic. The last prime lens I do want to talk about would be my 200 millimeter f2.8. Truthfully, I don't really think it has a great place in my bag and that's because it is lighter sure than a 70 to 200 um, if you're talking about an EF version, but the RF version, it feels about the same. Pretty much my RF 70 to 200 beats the 200 millimeter in every way from optics, autofocus, seems like even weight. So why would you want this lens? I think it would be great if you're a prime purist and you just want to have fun shooting with a prime. But remember, um, it doesn't even have image stabilization. Um, and again, this will beat it in every way. I think really this is going to be a lens that might interest someone looking to purchase a telephoto with or on a budget. I think for that person it could work. But the other thing is you could also just get the old EF 70 to 200 version one and probably spend maybe a hundred bucks more than you would picking this lens up. So up to you, but I probably can't recommend it. All right, next I have an honorable mention, which would be a fisheye lens. I enjoyed using one when I had it, but ultimately I decided to let it go um, and purchase gear I was gonna use more. I bought the fisheye lens because I've talked a lot on my channel about how I kind of got my bread and butter, my photography game from the first photographer I used to work with as a second shooter. And he would always have me get one specific shot with the fisheye, which got in my head like I needed a fisheye. And that would be as a bride would walk down an aisle, I would quickly go behind, get a big fisheye of everyone. Other than that, it was fun to use for like formal, uh, receptions, getting really close. Toward the very end of the night, I would just want to change it up, put a fisheye and get like in the mix of it all in the dance floor and get some cool shots. But the reality was it wasn't doing anything I needed it for. Like I, I could do most of what it was doing, just not with that cool flair with like my 17 to 40. So I got rid of it, but it was a fun lens to use. And there is an argument for making sure you're staying engaged with your craft. And one way is by having fun. And if you have fun with a fisheye, go for it. The last bit to mention would be vintage lenses. I personally do enjoy, I love shooting vintage lenses. I love the character I get. I love manually focusing, but is there a place for them on the job? And I really do not think so. Um, I think there's a place for that extra bit of time on the job that you're spending on yourself to make sure you're staying engaged in the craft and having fun. I've talked a lot about how I always try to do something new and different, but as far as like the large volume of your work, it shouldn't be shot on a vintage lens. It's impractical and at least by volume, you will deliver less quality work. You might have some cool shots with it, but you're gonna miss moments because of it. Maybe detail shots is where you can make that work. Or if you can't afford something like an F1.2 lens, you could pick, or even an F1.4, you could pick up a vintage lens for a lot less that might open up to F1.4. And then you can get those really low light shots, like detail shots, that kind of thing. But it won't be super practical for photographing anything else. Of course, there are lenses that I did not mention because I don't have them or because I don't think they're necessarily going to be necessary for event photography. But if you're using them, let me know. I'd love to hear in the comments some of your setups, like what you're rocking as an event photographer, or answer any questions you might have. 
Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support this channel, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I help you as much as you help me. I offer portfolio reviews, job reviews, whatever will help you. Thank you all for watching again. I really appreciate it.